All right, so this one pretty much blew away all the other ones in the poll, which I kind of completely forgot that we're getting a new Strangers film, like three of them, I think, this year, right? But we're getting, like, Chapter 1 on the next few months. It's supposed to be, like, the origin story of the Strangers, right? So completely forgot about that, and that's probably why the Strangers got so many votes. The Strangers from 2008, written and directed by Brian Bertino, who is a very underrated director and writer. Well, he's he's done a handful of very, very good films. Now, this movie has Liv Tyler, who is just breathtakingly gorgeous, and Scott Speedman. We have Dennis Reynolds taking time off from It's Always Sunny to be here. He's always going to be Dennis to me. But we have Glenn Howerton. Now, this film is very beloved by a lot of people. Now, I'm not saying that I don't care for this movie. I think this is a great film. Just not as big on this as a lot of people are. In fact, I kind of prefer the sequel, Strangers Pray at Night, to this film. The whole scene in Pray at Night with Total Eclipse of the Heart, with Man in the Mask, and that whole scene is fantastic which Damien Maffei is the actor who plays Man in the Mask in Pray at Night. I had to reschedule my uh, interview with him last week. So soon I'll let you guys know when we reschedule that, because that'll be a fun person to talk to. He plays fucking killers and everything. But I do prefer the sequel. I feel like it's just a little more eventful than this movie. Even though I would say this film is a little more true to real life and they try to play that angle with the it's based on true events yeah it's not based on any actual you know singular event or anything they do this all the time it's was partially based off the tate murders the manson murders and then somebody noted like in the press or something that it also resembled uh some cabin murders but it's just basically based on a whole bunch of home invasions which is a terrifying idea I mean, this is your home, or even if it's not your home, it's somewhere you're staying. It's where you're residing. It's where you're resting your head at night. It's supposed to be your safe space. And instead, it ends up being like your own death chamber and torture chamber, both psychologically and physically. And one thing that I think this movie is just infamous for is the reason that they give at the end. Like, why us? Like, why why pick us? Because you're home. It's a great, great answer. (laughs) It's a great line of dialogue. And you can see why it's such a famous line. That and the whole Tamara. Is Tamara home? That's become another pretty famous line in the horror lexicon. So as for these next three, I don't know. I'm excited to see what they do with it. And like I said, I do prefer the sequel to this. So who knows where they'll go from here. I haven't seen the trailer It's not really something I care about, these movies, so maybe I'll do a trailer reaction or something sometime this week. But let's talk The Strangers from 2008. Now, these are two very different films in very different directions in the home invasion genre, but two movies in this genre that I much prefer and that work a lot better for me are Funny Games both the original from 10 years before this 97 and the remake from 2007 and coincidentally also from 2007 inside the french film that's a lot more brutal funny games is a little more i'd say out there and definitely not realistic so this one definitely nails the realism aspect i don't know those two other movies definitely stick out in my head as ones that instantly come to mind that i like better in this whole home invasion subgenre. So James and Kristen, they've been dating, and he wants to finally ask her to get married. She ends up rejecting him, and they were just at a wedding. They get back to his, I think it's like a summer like getaway house or something like that. We have James depression eating ice cream, just like John Hammond near the end of Jurassic Park. So after they have a whole little discussion about the future of their relationship they get the knock on the door and then she gives the famous line is tamara here and their reactions are great the way that Liv tyler she's just Liv tyler the way she looks at her in like a confused way but she does feel threatened a bit and james's look too 
He's like just baffled. He's like, um, no, yeah, you got the wrong place. Which is a weird incident, like in and of itself. Like if it's just you and somebody else and you're in a pretty remote and isolated area and some weird chick just wandered onto your porch at like three or four in the morning, I think it is, right? It's it's pretty late or early. But to have some stranger just knock on your door and ask for some girl, like, why is this girl out at this hour anyway? Why is she knocking on any cabin looking for somebody? It just gets your mind going, and it makes you paranoid. And the film does a very good job of doing that to you as a viewer. And I really like the small touch they threw in here because she doesn't want to be seen, and she doesn't want to knock on these people's door in a mask yet. <laughs> She has her normal face, and you can just make out, like, small little features, like, barely enough. You can tell, like, she's blonde, or at least dirty blondish. But the porch light, later on after she leaves, he goes and he messes with the light bulb, and the light turns on. Because while she's standing at the door and looking all creepy, he tries to flick the light on. So she took the light bulb and unscrewed it. I like that little detail that they threw in there. But... Could just be an innocent thing, right? Could just be somebody who was looking for some girl named Tamara, had the wrong house, and that's it. You move on with your night. She comes back, and she's whispering through the door again, is Tamara here? Are you sure? This bitch is getting shot. Like, absolutely. Now you know that there's something going on with this person. That they're either mentally fucked up in the head, or that they're, they're purposely messing with you. So this is when the gun comes out, and then you say, all right, you got 10 seconds or less to get off my property. But they don't go there yet. And I mean, just the fact that James leaves her alone after that weird-ass girl knocked on the door asking for Tamara to go... I mean, but it is to go get cigarettes, so I, yeah, it's cool, I guess. But there's some tense scenes here with her alone in the house after... She just heard the girl mention Tamara again, and she's walking throughout this place. Then the smoke alarm goes off. That scares the shit out of her. Then she has another knock at the door. Then she finally gets to talk to James on the phone, and then the line gets cut. And then the shot that we get, the first time we see the man in the mask, she's like over in the kitchen, and she has like the glassware right above her, the island of the kitchen, and in the background, you see the man in the mask just lurking there. What a fantastic shot that is. There is no attention being drawn to him for the first, like, ten seconds or so. Then your eyes adjust, you see him there, and uh, then she kind of feels a presence, it seems like. The way she plays it, she's getting something to drink, like, uh, from the faucet. And then she, like, has this look, and she turns around, and then we see that he's gone. But then she hears the noise. The tension building is spectacular in this whole sequence. Now, she, of course, is petrified, and she grabs a knife from the kitchen. Which, of course, you'll never know how you're going to act or react in a situation until you're actually in that situation. But I can tell you now, if I thought somebody was in my house, I'm grabbing multiple weapons. Like, I'm taking, like, Five, six knives. I'm putting them all between each finger like Wolverine. Like, I'm putting a knife down my shoe. I'm putting a knife down my pants. I'm putting a knife over here. I'm going to be to the gills with weapons just in case, you know, who knows how many people are in this house. She only heard a sound. It could be one person or like here, it could be three. Let's say it's, you do what she does. You just grab one knife person pops out, you stab them. It's your first time stabbing somebody. You don't realize how hard it is to get that knife out of that person's neck. And while you're trying to struggle with that, you got another person, the second killer, running after you and a third one right on foot behind them. You got to be prepared for anything. So you need multiple knives and weapons. <laughs> Not just the knife that she grabs. That's the whole point I'm trying to make here. And some of you will say, like, who thinks of this shit? I'll be like, yeah, not many. I do, but I can guarantee your ass that in the scenario here, my version is going to save my ass a lot more than our version. And then I love how the smoke detector is placed on the chair. And that's what gives it away 100% to her. That she knows that all right, someone is in the house with me. Because she knows where that thing was before. I can't think of the song that 
the record that was playing earlier, and it skips in this awesome scene here. But after she goes to the curtains to open them, and she gets the living shit scared out of her when she sees the guy in the bag sackhead. <laughs> Just right outside the window, and she freaks out. She starts and she hits the record player, and it starts skipping. That record skipping and repeating over and over again really just adds to the chaos and insanity that it starts to ensue here. So she locks herself in the bedroom, and then magically, James just shows up without seeing a single person or thing or anything. <laughs> And she explains what's going on. But then we get a great shot when they look out the window and they see, I always forget which one. I think this is Dollface, right? Because then the, I love the names too. Man in the Mask, Dollface, and Pinup Girl. And it's actually astonishing to me how popular and iconic these three villains in horror have gotten from just two movies. But the shot of her when they look out the window and she's across the street and he says she looks like a ghost, that's a great shot too. Then James goes to the car and this is where it gets fucking stupid for me. I'm sorry. One of the girls, whether it's Dollface or Pinup, he's looking in the car and then you see someone tap him on the back of the head. And then he turns right around with the knife and he's like looking around and they're just... They evaporate. They're gone. Get the fuck out of here. There's no way that anyone was able to touch him and then get away in time. They're not hiding under the car, behind the car. No, they show shots of that. They just disappear. So unless these women killers be that more of ghosts, there's no way that they were able to do that. See, this is why, for me, I don't hold this film up in such high regard as others do. I feel like it has some pacing issues. When they try to make the escape in the car, and then one of the killers ends up like, ramming into them, and then they have to rush back into the house, and then, I mean... Him coming with the axe, you know, axing down the door, that's kind of cool. But this whole, like, 15-minute or so stretch, it, it just kind of really slows down for and I kind of, like, lose interest for a bit. So then Dennis Reynolds arrives, and after his windshield of his car gets absolutely destroyed, he goes into this house, has no clue what's going on. And it's cool. I like how they have the masked guy, like, with the axe creeping behind him just for him to be shot dead <laughs> by James, which can you really blame him? I couldn't. I mean, just on adrenaline alone and fear, and not for, just for yourself, but for the woman you love, you're so hopped up on fear and panic and all of that that as soon as you see somebody emerge into your field of vision, you're going to shoot. And unfortunately, he ends up shooting and killing his friend. And then this is another, like, 15 minutes or so that goes by that I kind of lose interest. That the pacing just is a little slow for me. That is pretty much all Liv Tyler just being chased or hiding. And some of it's suspenseful, but after you've seen it once, and I don't know, it just doesn't do it for me. But then we get the fantastic ending, where they're both knocked unconscious. They regain consciousness, it's morning outside, and this is when they ask, why us? Why are you doing this to us? And we get the infamous line, because you are home. So just wrong place, wrong time, and it's awful. And then seeing them both get stabbed to death, we think, until at the end we have the two kids that we see in the very beginning who stumble upon the crime scene after we have a little interaction between the killers and these two kids that they're giving out like religious pamphlets and Dollface gets out and one of the kids says are you a sinner and she says sometimes and takes the pamphlet and then they, she gets in and she says it'll be easier next time so is she saying that to pin up girl because maybe we'll find out like in this new movie in the prequel because it seems like this was one of their first times and I'm guessing it's Pinup Girl because Dollface is the one who says the line. So I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. And then the two kids arrive and they see the blood everywhere. And then Kristen, that's her name again, Liv Tyler. She reaches out and she's apparently still alive. And that's the 911 call we hear in the beginning. Great movie. Great home invasion film. It just has some spots here and there that, that lag for me. And I have a few other movies in this subgenre I hold a lot higher. But like I said, this movie is very, very popular and made a 
pretty large amount of money back at the box office. I think it was like a eight million dollar budget or five million, something like that, and it made like seventy, eighty million. It made a decent amount of money. Uh, then just from this movie and the sequel, we have these iconic three killers in horror. So that's the Strangers from two thousand eight. The Strangers Pray at Night. Maybe I'll do that one soon. Maybe when I hear back from uh, Damien Buffet, I'll do that beforehand so it ties into that a little bit. But all right, guys, I will talk to you soon. Hope everyone has a great night. Take care, everybody.